All right, welcome to Young Athletic. I'm Christian, and I have my guest, Gabby in Alaska. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Um, how was your day? Like, what 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 did you go through? Um, well, I woke up this morning, kind of late, as usual, but I went to school, and I, after school, I went to swim practice. Okay, so you're a swimmer, right? Yeah. All right. How how swim? Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it's kind of like a great environment, you know, it's family type of team. It's very competitive at the same time, though. Okay, so do you enjoy swim? Yes, I do. Uh, I love the fact that everybody gets along with each other, you know. We're actually going to throw a party this Friday. Okay. <laughs> for any special occasion or no. just just for fun? Yeah, just for fun. Oh, okay, that's fair. I mean, did you play any other sports? Um, when I was younger, my first sport that I played, I played softball. I was not good at it, but, you know, I tried. <laughs> and, it's, it's the effort that yeah. matters. Uh, after that, I started playing soccer. I played that for a good while. Um, I actually just stopped playing this last summer. I also ran track for a while um, through middle school, but I didn't like that. I'm not really into running. Uh, Even though you're a soccer player? Yeah. <laughs> it's different. It's different. Okay. <laughs> but then in high school, I started doing swim. So I did that all four years. And then my senior year, I just did water polo and swim. Water polo and swim? Yeah. Okay. I mean, how was water polo? It was pretty fun. Uh, it was very competitive, you know. Would you say it's similar to soccer? Like, it it is it is yeah it's just in the water kind of they even have like offsides they do they do so how do they determine that like is it the same type of rule that they have with offsides or is it no okay so there's like a part of the pool where you like can't cross so it's like off limits yeah but it's like so it's called a two meter mm -hmm. so you basically can't cross there unless the ball crosses that line. So the, okay, so yeah. pretty much like soccer. So yeah. the ball has to be in front of the player in order for you to cross it. Yeah, in a way. Okay. And was it kind of like an easy transition going into water polo? Like from coming from soccer? I think uh, based on the rules, kind of. But I was pretty good at it. Uh, I was captain. I don't know why I was captain, but I guess probably just leadership Mm. But I had never played the sport before. So this was your first year? Yeah. How would you say you did? I think I did pretty good. I got second team all league. Oh, congrats, congrats. Yeah. And, like, would you, would you say competing for a starting spot? Because were, were there more than – how many people are allowed in the pool? Seven. Like, seven people? Yeah. So in total, there's, 15, there's 14 yes. people in the pool. Yeah. Would you say that's crowded or was it – it was pretty good. I mean, the space that we play in, it's like a big pool. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good. But y you do get tired. You got to swim that whole pool. You got to swim. You got to hold the ball. Yeah. Is it hard throwing the ball? Because how, how deep is the pool? Um, I mean, you can't touch the ground. So it's... Yeah. Because how tall are you? Like five? I'm five two. Five ish. two. So you can't touch the ground? No. Ouch. Yeah. So it's difficult throwing the ball or... No, I don't think it's difficult. I mean, you really got to work on it. So you basically like kick with your legs to stay afloat and then... But no, honestly, water polo players are pretty buff. So I don't think it's difficult. So it requires a lot of upper body yeah. powder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so pretty easy transition, you would say, for you, right? Yeah, I think so. So was, did you have any friends that played on that team? or? Yeah, um, I actually was friends with, like, the whole team. <laughs> okay, so you didn't go in alone, practically. No. Okay. And then swim, like, what? Is there different types of swimming? like? Uh, there's different strokes. Okay. Yeah, um, I swim butterfly. I also do breaststroke. And, yeah. How Do you have, like, a personal record? for eat any of those or um this year uh my hundred fly is 
the fastest I've gone is a one minute 29. Yeah. And that's 100 meters or is that? 100 yards. 100 yards. So how many yeah. times back and forth in the pool? Four. Four times? Yeah. And you did that in a minute? And 29 seconds. The that's seconds right. matter in swim. <laughs> Second. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because they determine your placing, right? Yeah. But I'm not that fast. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're average, you would say? Or yeah, I'm pretty okay. average. Do you ever try to beat that personal record? Like, have you ever been close? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the CIF time is one twenty-five or something like that. Oh, so you're four seconds off. Yeah. Are you trying to make CIF? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I'm trying to reach that goal this year. Oh, it's your last year. Yeah. You got to. Um, what? I mean, what other sports did you play? Uh, I think that's pretty much it for, like, sports. I did, yeah, all the ones I mentioned were pretty fun, though. Okay. And then what about soccer? Did you play for school? Uh, I played for three years. How was that? It was fun, but also, like, there was a lot of bickering on the team. I don't, I'm not for that. You're not a, for, up for the bickering? No. Oh, okay. I mean, did you at least enjoy playing, or...? Was it just not a good environment? Um, I think just the environment. I mean, would you say it's the same for the guys or no? I mean, for the guys, for us, it's more like like you got my back, I got your back type of deal. Yeah, it's like, definitely not like that with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Well, I mean, it's not fair, but I mean, what what environment would you want to play in? Honestly, I just love the family environment. Everybody cheers each other on, like everybody wants you to reach your goals your own personal goals okay so and for any sport that would apply to right yeah i mean do you have any hobbies besides um, any sports not really uh, i kind of just watch tv when i can or hang out with my friends yeah what about you uh i'm i don't really do any hobbies i mean i coach uh, I hope my dad was a couple teams. I exercise, or at least I try. Yeah. But other than that, I'm either doing homework, sleeping. I'm a big sleeper, or just soccer. I mean, soccer is a big part of me, so it takes up most of my time. Yeah. Um, would you say soccer is like your life? Uh, yeah, I would say soccer is, I wouldn't say like soccer life, you know, or anything <laughs> like that. But I mean, I enjoyed a lot. My dad introduced me to the sport when I was like really young, maybe like three and a half, mm -hmm. four. I played, I think I played a little too soon because in, in like AYSO, I was an AYSO kid. I didn't start off with club. Same. Um, My dad introduced me at like three and a half mm -hmm. and I wasn't like a big fan of it my dad introduced me to it and I played with my cousin which was a little bit older at the time mm -hmm. and I played on his team and so even though I was little but sometimes when I get like sat on the bench um my cousin's grandpa would get us mango from the uh, lotero mm -hmm. and we would just eat that on the bench until we got put back in <laughs> So I'd be snacking on the whole time. But, I mean, up until then, like, may, as I got older, I took the sport uh, more serious. Just because uh, my dad really pushed me a lot. Yeah. Like, sometimes to the point where it didn't feel so good, but it felt nice. It felt nice to have, like, a hand on your back pushing you towards your goals. Because, I mean, soccer is something that, like, I hope to pursue. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, like, trying to – it's still hard for me to believe that, like, I can achieve that. Mm -hmm. So do you um, kind of want to still play soccer after high school? Uh, Yeah, I, I intend to keep on playing soccer for one of my local colleges. Um, uh, I don't think I would go out of state mm -hmm. just yet because I'm kind of a homesick, kind of like a mama – and dad's kind of boy. So I, I don't think I'm quite ready to leave mm -hmm. my town yet. But, I mean, other than that, I, I probably would still play soccer. 
Um, yeah, soccer, soccer really helps me with a lot of things. Like it really is my stress, my anxiety. I mean, would you say that does the same for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, the other day I was in like a really bad mood, but I just knew like if I go to practice, I'm going to feel better. It helps. So it's like a sense of a comfort zone that you have. Yeah, I just feel like talking to people like you enjoy spending your time with and doing something you have fun. You just got to keep doing it. Okay. And like, again, with your hobbies, you just sit at home and watch. <laughs> Is there like a favorite TV show you have that you just put on like that? Um, Not really, but I just kind of binge watch Netflix, like any show I could find. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, is there like a favorite type of movie that you have? Or is there a favorite, is there a movie that inspires you? Uh, not that really inspires me, but I'm a really big Disney fanatic. So I really love watching The Little Mermaid or watching like old Disney movies. Yeah. Do you watch any sports? I don't watch sports. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like any movies that like, any sports movies. Uh, my dad loves uh, Remember the Titans. Oh, I... I love that one. That one actually inspires me a lot because it's like a really, it, it has a deep meaning to it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, those guys are going through a rough time. You know, there's a lot of racism. And it just really captivates where the sport can bring people together. Mm -hmm. And there's another one similar to that is uh, The Blind Side. That one has to do. Oh, yeah, I've seen that movie. That one... That one's a good one because it, it, it really does show, like, sports can bring people together. Yeah. People together. Um, would you say that's something you love about sports? I would say that. I, I would say sports does bring people together. It just has to do with the right environment. Like, for me, um, soccer is, like, literally the only sport I played. Mm -hmm. um, the environment has to be, like... For me, a little bit professional. Like people not need to like stay dialed in. Um, more have to want it. They have to like push each other, get on each other's backs. Cause, um, cause I, at my team, I play with a, an academy here. Um, it's where like if you mess up a pass, someone's gonna yell at you. It's either the coach or your teammate. <laughs> like we're not like if you mess up one pass, you're you're like there for lunch like that's just how it is and i feel like that's kind of like the environment i need because i mean it's different for everybody yeah like for you it's a family type of environment and for me it's like i need someone on my back all the time because if not then the other team is going to get me yeah well for sure i think other people will need to like well at least for me like my dad is always there I guess rooting me on, but he's mostly yelling at me, telling me I'm doing it wrong or something. Mm -hmm. But I think it helps me out, so I kind of see where you're coming from. So a like bit. Constru constructive, ugh, constructive criticism, you would yeah. say. How would you say you take that? I think I take constructive criticism pretty well. I don't know if other people would say that, but I think I take it pretty well. I mean, I'll mm. fix it. I'll fix my mm -hmm. things when I need to do. But yeah. Okay. I mean. I think for me, I take I don't think I took constructive criticism that well, especially mm -hmm. from a particular coach. Um, he would always call me a head like a he always because I'd make dumb runs on the field without the ball, and I just run after the ball when he has a strategy put in place where you mm -hmm. have to cover the player. And I would just chase after the ball like I was still in AY. So when I was playing for a club, he would call me uh, a headless chicken. Cause you know, when when you cut the head off a chicken, it still, it still can run, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember him always calling me that. And that's when, after I think like two years, once he called, like, like stopped calling me that, just because I stopped making that same mistake. But I always remember hearing that out of his mouth. I'd be so mad. <laughs> like it actually like, it would piss me off just because the amount of times I would hear it and I'd be like, oh, like, sometimes I like, I wanted to go off on him. But other than that, I didn't. And I think I remember this one specific time I was playing with an all-star team. We played against a club team 
we got we got smacked <laughs> i would say because it's an ayso team but our my club coach came to help and give some pointers and stuff mm. and I, all i remember is him calling my name from the sidelines just just absolutely going off on me because i played for me is i played differently in a club environment to like a recreational environment mm. so it's in a recreational environment i feel more free like i can mess around goof around you know but in a club like i take it seriously but i wasn't like fully developed then like you get what i'm saying yeah so like there's like two kind of personalities that i have within those areas i mean would you say that you have two different personalities when it comes to rec or like serious club um well when i was playing rec I'd say yeah, like it was more fun type of thing. Like it wasn't so serious. It was just like you could go out there and run amok and no one would even care. But then like in club, it's like you have to really be serious and on top of your game because if not, everybody's gonna yell at you. Mm -hmm. But I think like what you were saying, constructive criticism, you have to take it well because like a team doesn't work like that. Like you have to learn to take that well. Yeah, I think constructive criticism has to go with along with everything like mm -hmm. in life because i mean you're gonna take hear it from like your bosses from other people fellow peers and that's something like sports really does help like help develop that mentality whether you got to take that mm -hmm. in account and you got to think to yourself and be like you know what maybe i do have to fix this or maybe i can work on this and i mean that's that's my take on sports like do, do you take anything else from sports like as in as in like um like a life skill that you have um leadership definitely uh i'm a captain so i think you gotta really be committed yourself and you have to really show everybody like how to be committed stay committed your ambitions your goals you have to be there Mm -hmm. And so, like, you would say you're ambitious. Like, what is your one of, one of the biggest ambitions that you have that you want to accomplish? Um, as in life or sports-wise? I mean, in general, like, life, sports, tell me both. Uh, life, I really want to go to school and study, and I want to become a doctor. Uh, I hope to come back to, you know, my small town, Santa Paula, and I hope to work there for a nonprofit one day and help my community and then in sports in sports i think i have more like small go goals i'm not really trying to play in college anymore i think i'm done i'm pretty worn out <laughs> <laughs> are you worn out yet uh me personally i don't think i'm worn out i think there's times like like periods of time where i feel like i've been burnt out mm-hmm but I think it's only come down to like a game or anything. Cause I ever had a really bad habit of judging a bad game and then having that bad game reflect on like what emotions I'm going to show. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm a really sore, sore loser. Like if we like, I'll t I can take a good loss. Like if it's a two, one deal, like last minute goal, I could take that. And if it's a really good goal, like they score it from like 25 yards out, fair play to the other team. But if mm -hmm. it's like an easy tap in, like, you know, like those easy goals, those simple mistakes, I can't take those. Like for my teams, because I'm a captain as well. Um, but for my teams, I kind of like have to be that like that overhead figure to like have everybody like have that same like mentality mentality is me but i mean obviously like not everybody's gonna yeah. have that same mentality i see what you mean i mean there's also that frustration that you get like when people aren't doing their jobs or i feel like sometimes people don't care as much mm -hmm. but everybody definitely needs to work hard yeah and it's just very frustrating because like some people don't even show up to practices some people have like excuses where they don't want to yeah. come in and it's just frustrating because like as a captain, you kind of have to, like, hold them up and, like, push them to be better. Yeah, for sure. I and think also, like, you as a captain should not have to, like, 
really tell them they need to come to practice. That should be their own commitment already by even joining a team. I think yeah. people need to realize that a little bit more. Yeah, because it, it does make, because I mean, there's no I in team. Yeah. Like, you're not going to get that from any team mm-hmm. unless you're playing tennis or Batman. Mm-hmm. But even those can play in doubles. But um, I think it's just, it's frustrating at times. But I mean, at times you just got to suck it up and go along with the punches. And I think that's really helped me mature, uh, I would say. Like going along with the constructive criticism. Yeah. <laughs> like you would really have to mature emotionally and learn about your own mistakes and see like what's going on. And even sometimes like I would check myself like mentally, I would ask myself like, okay, why am I mad? Why am I pissed off? Mm-hmm. Like, even though I shouldn't, because, you know, sometimes like I would think like, I don't know if you do this, like you ever recap and ask yourself, like, did I have a good game or like? Definitely. Um, a lot of the times I look back and I'm like, I probably could have done something else like in that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get yeah. mad and rethink it like the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird, isn't it? Because, like, sometimes, like, you got to think back and you got to rewind. You got to see, okay, I could have done this. Because sometimes I I catch myself, even during class, I, like, relapse the moment. And I'm like, okay, I could have passed the ball right here. I know, me too. could have made the run. (laughs) And it just, it's upsetting sometimes Mm -hmm. because, like, it's in the past. But, I mean, I've also had, like, plenty of good moments. I mean, scoring goals. You know, is there a particular goal that you would say, like, stands out out of all of them? Um, One time I was in a tournament in Santa Barbara, and it was the first time I had scored an Olympic goal. I was very excited. I don't remember how old I was, but it was, like, my biggest moment. I was really happy. Gotcha. Yeah. But I think it just took a lot of hard work, to be honest. I practiced a lot. I worked on it a lot. Yeah. So consistency, you would say? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, I mean, what, like, what? what's your school life looking like? School like, life, I think that's my number one priority to me. Um, I know it's student athlete, there should be both, but school always comes first to me. Uh, I'm a straight A student and I take AB classes honors i'm third in class oh you're third like yeah. ranked third in the class yeah uh, how do you feel about that i feel proud of myself honestly i think i really pushed myself to get and reach my goals that i've been trying to accomplish so i applied to college and i'm actually deciding between ucla and cal Lutheran right now and i mean would you ever try to reach the number one spot or or nah, just settle at third. I mean, I don't think there's enough time anymore. I'm a senior. There's I mean, only a could, couple weeks left. I mean, you could still reach it. You could still think, like, whether, oh, I want to, like, take this course or, like, add this course. Because they're pretty sure there's dual enrollment, correct? Yeah, I'm taking dual enrollment already. Okay. And you're, I mean, that's still a big accomplishment, being third out of the whole school. Yeah. So, I mean, congrats what, to you. What's your class rank? Ouch, I don't want to. <laughs> I would say I'm a... I'm an average type of student. I'm, I do struggle a little bit, but it's not as bad. Um, I think the student athlete mentality wasn't there because I just mm. put athleticism first, and that's where like my parents would get on top of me. And I do really thank my parents for that because, I mean, school does come first, and all their, every family member will tell you that because you're not gonna get anywhere without school Mm -hmm. and I think like my dad would always tell me um the way you play on the field is the way you should play like outside the field therefore like meaning like however hard you're going to play in the field that's where you got to transition and put it into your schoolwork Mm -hmm. and I think it's it it sticks there, but I still like struggle with it because like, like I'm still in that athletic mentality. Even like, though you're not playing sports right now. I mean, I am playing. You sports. are. I am. I I practice with my 
uh, Academy Club right now. Mm-hmm. And our season is coming up next month, I believe. And we have 12 games. It's kind of weird right now because right now there's a lot of rain and the parks don't allow us to practice. Yeah. So it's difficult. So we can't get any practices because I think we've only had like three or four practices. And then other than that, I do personal training with uh, one of my dad's uh, friends. Mm -hmm. And he really pushes me. I think one time I've actually cried in a session cried no like no kidding <laughs> like the background is like i was pulling cramps i was out of shape mm-hmm. like it was bad i was out of shape my legs were heavy and i felt a cramp in my quad and i decided to let it go like i didn't think too much about it and uh i pulled the the cramp and hearing the the words come out of his mouth he's like you know what like we can pick it up tomorrow like we can go again tomorrow and finish up. And when I was only like, I think, 45 minutes into the session, and the session is like two hours. So I like cried because I was like pissed at myself because I wasn't like able to like fulfill. So I just like sucked it up and I just rolled out my cramp and then just carried on. You know, the same thing happened to me today. But it wasn't a cramp. I was choking in the water. <laughs> Ouch. I know. Um, but you know, rain or shine, we do have practice for swim because you're already wet. <laughs> That's true. Because I mean, doesn't it get annoying though playing in the rain? Um, not really. Unless it's raining hard, then like it kind of hurts a little bit. But mm. not really. It's fun. It's fun to play in the rain. Yeah. The- Honestly, I think playing in the rain in soccer is fun too. I would say playing in the rain is somewhat okay just because like me personally i don't like the rain um just because the ball we play on turf fields Mm -hmm. and the ball skips and to me i i don't like when the ball skips because i can't control the ball and so sometimes it'll skip right underneath my foot and i'll just it's like an ick of mine like i don't like the rain at all and then like i would have like longer hair and i would have to like put it up you need a haircut. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I mean, did did you enjoy playing in the rain? Like, yeah, I like, love playing in the rain. Is there a memory that you look back on playing in the rain? Um, you know what? One time, me and my dad, well, because my dad used to coach me, um, but it was raining and it was muddy. And so, like, my dad was like, if you guys win, like, I'll go in the mud. He went in the mud. Ouch. Yeah. So I'm guessing you guys won that game. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> it was funny. I think one memory that I have playing in the rain was in AY. So I played, I think I was like six. Mm. And I remember there was a certain point in the game where the ball was out. And just one kid, there's a massive puddle of mud right there. It was mud, water, you know. And he just jumps in, belly flops. Just just out of nowhere. And after that, everybody else just started coming in. And it was just pretty much, that was it. <laughs> it yeah, was you just, guys are kids. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, back to my personal trainer. Um, <laughs> thank you for him. Uh, just because, do you have someone that, like, motivate you personally um i think well because you know you have your education and you have athletics so i think for athletics my dad definitely motivates me i'm always hearing him yell at me (laughs) but it helps like it's not more of like oh my gosh i wish my dad would stop yelling at me like i enjoy it (laughs) i know he's right there knowing Mm. that i could do better yeah so i push myself but for like school my mom motivates me you know, she's never stopped going to school. Like she had me at a young age and she was struggling to get her associates, but now she's in law school and um, getting her master's. Okay. Yeah. Mm, all right. That's, well, I mean, that's good to have motivations behind that and that people speak on both sides of that. Yeah. I mean, that kind of like represents me in a way because, you know, student athlete, you have to do both at the same time and not just one can have all your attention. You got to 
fulfill both. Yeah. I think, I mean, I would have the same motivations. Like my dad, he was my coach for so long. Mm -hmm. And my mom, with my education, she's just on top of me. Just because, like, you got you have to have an education to mm -hmm. to do something, and it's just better for you in general just to have an education. But I felt like I've had other people help motivate me. Mm -hmm. um, my uncle, my uncles, both went to um, pre prestigious colleges. Um, I think I believe both of my uncles went to USC. Oh, wow. The rivals of US, um, uh, UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would they would always haggle on me on my grades and stuff, like call me out of random, just call me and motivate me and just get on my back for absolutely no reason. But, I mean, it's a good to have a good motivation. And then my dad, on the other hand, was sports. And again, with my education, but mostly on sports. And then just recently, um, like I said earlier, um, one of my personal trainers, um, Carmona. Me and yeah, Carmona and my dad are like best friends at this point, and I've only met him a year ago, pretty mm -hmm. much coming onto a year, and he's just become one of like my best trainers. So again, I would say I would thank him a lot because he's really pushed me to my limits, and he's just really helped me grow as a player because he. He like he always tries to tell me he sees potential in me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, do you have somebody that tells you that? And like, how does it make you feel? Um, honestly, like here and there from family members, but not like as much. Um, I feel like I need to motivate myself. I think it comes more from me. So self motivation. Yeah. So self motivation would be a big part of your. Definitely. I think you need to, you know, fulfill your own goals and push yourself. If you don't have, like, that want to do the things you need to accomplish in life, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. And, I mean, do you have any siblings? Yes, I have four siblings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, three girls, one boy. So would you say, what advice would you give them growing up? To stay in school. And to keep trying no matter what or no matter how hard it gets because it will get hard. That's true. Yeah. I, th I have an older sister and absolute like, she's a bookworm. She, like, <laughs> she's, read, she's read the whole, like, Harry Potter series. And you know how thick those books are. Yeah. She's read that and many other series. Like, she has a whole library shelf filled with books that she's read. I don't know how many she's read to completion but she's read a lot and sometimes like she would like just this last year i would i started in like staying up doing my homework mm -hmm. she would like come up to me and be like so how are you doing like like what are you working on do you need any help and uh i felt like she was a good motivator too because sometimes it's good to have those deep talks within siblings you know mm -hmm. You're trying to understand each other and just to see, like, from another's perspective. And uh, for me, that's a, another big motivation that adds on for my uncles, my mom, my dad, um, also my sister. Because she, she's attending a university. She recently graduated from um, uh, junior college. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember actually almost crying at my sister's junior college just because at her actual junior college and her high school college or uh, high school graduation just because like in some way she does inspire me mm -hmm. and like she's just always had that higher like grade than me you know yeah like school wise yeah, yeah. she's not really an athletic I have that one up on her, but. <laughs> I but. wonder if that's how my little brother sees me. Cause I mean, like, I feel like I'm more of like a school kind of gal and he's very athletic, but I don't know. He doesn't get the best grades. Mm. Yeah. But I think he definitely needs to start motivating himself a little bit more. Cause I know he could do it. Mm. You could probably do it too. Yes. Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, what would you say is like one of the hardships like, of being a student athlete? Uh, stress, probably. It's very stressful, but you have to keep going. Like nothing is gonna fix by itself, you know? Like stress is always gonna be there. You just have to get over it and keep showing up, keep getting your things done. Eventually everything balances out, you know? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you deal with that stress? Like is there a certain thing that you do, a certain video you put on? Um, I think I kind of just try to take care of myself the best that I can, you know, like skincare routines or like take a hot shower, just de-stress and do nothing for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what do you do to like de-stress besides skin routine, like skincare? Um, I'll just like lay down, probably read a book or go on my phone, talk to my mom or just hang out with my siblings okay do you do anything to de-stress um i would say one thing i used to do to de-stress was um take a walk like sometimes i would just be so stressed out like i remember taking government class and being so stressed out because the amount of work i was given i remember cutting it to like the last semester i had to make this big old six page project Mm -hmm. And it had to be front and back. And it was just so stressful because I couldn't find the information that I wanted. I remember having so many mental breakdowns. Like, it was bad. But the way I managed it was to just go out for a 10-minute walk, cry, let anything out, mm -hmm. talk to myself. And then after 10 minutes, get right back to work. And then after that, I would feel so much better because, like, I just got all of that emotion out of me so it doesn't affect my my thought process or anything or either take a cold shower no matter cold showers a cold shower <laughs> a cold shower always helps with everything i cannot do a cold shower trust I me i need like burning steaming hot <laughs> <laughs> have, have, after a game have you ever like taken a nice bath or anything okay, like that no when my ankle broke one time i couldn't even put my foot in the ice like i'm not doing my whole body like that that is crazy no no <laughs> i remember going to a tournament in arizona with my team and uh i remember after two games and back to back we played we went back we got chipotle of course <laughs> yeah, we, well no because you got to eat properly and and Literally, we couldn't go to a grocery store and cook up our own food because yeah. it was like seven o'clock, and we were like, "Well, I wouldn't say we're that far from the hotel, but um, uh, we got Chipotle. You had to eat proteins, rice, beans, lettuce, anything to replenish the the body and the proteins that you lost in the game." And uh, I remember our coach calling us all in the lobby, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he said, okay, get a group and uh, get into someone's room. You guys are all taking 15-minute um, uh, ice baths. In the same water? No, we would recycle oh, okay. it. okay. I mean, some oh, guys were bold God. enough to, like, keep the water, just add ice. Oh, my God. But obviously, we'd have, like, it was, it was tough because, like, trust me, like, we only filled it with only water and then mm -hmm. a little bit of ice. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, other way around little bit of water and then mostly ice and i remember being one of the first people to go into my like tub filled with ice and it was literally just ice just ice just ice and i had to like bury myself like i had to scoop the ice out and bury my legs but in the end it, it felt nice because like from down to like my lower body mm. was just numb See, that's what I don't like about it. I do not like being numb like that. Like, sometimes at swim meets, it'll be so cold. Like, it's been raining a lot recently, so it's been freezing. And my hands and my, like, feet will get so numb. It's so hard to race like that. I hate it. So you can't handle, like, cold, cold temperatures? No. Not even to, like, recover your body or anything like that? No. Seriously? Seriously. I mean, so just piping hot water then? Definitely. Gotcha. Yeah. 
And then I'm just going out to the school subject. Uh, going out to the school subject. I mean, what would you say your favorite subject is? Um, definitely more of a math and science kind of person, since you know I kind of have decided that my major is going to be biology. So I've always kind of just routed myself in those directions. I've also been pretty good at math, so that's what I was kind of stuck to more. When I was young, my mom was still in school, so she kind of like taught me how to do math. So I think that's part of one of the reasons why I'm good at it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I would, I would never think you were the type of math type of person because you think majority of people don't like math. Yeah. I me I don't like math at all. Like I'm more of a science type of person. Like I took honors bio, honors chemistry. That's pretty much the only two honors classes I took, <laughs> but I enjoyed it because I got an A in those classes and it was just cool. And right now I'm taking uh, physiology and anatomy, mm. and uh, right now we're doing dissections, and uh, it's really cool what you can learn about the human body. Because I mean, for one of my careers, I kind of want to go into like the medical branch or something along that line of becoming a uh, sports trainer. Mm -hmm. So still around athletes but trying to help rehabilitate the body yeah um so kind of what i want to do is i want to be a doctor i'm kind of between family practice and a pediatrician right now but um i'm also in anatomy and i really enjoy that class you know i, I think it's probably one of my favorite classes maybe not my favorite teacher but <laughs> definitely one of my favorite subjects that i can agree on <laughs> but i mean other than that i mean it's a cool class because you it's a lot of information takedown yeah because it's just pure notes and then after that you'll do a couple labs because i remember we did a lab um we dissected a brain that was uh that was odd for me because we had to dissect it and like you saw like all the different parts mm -hmm. and it kind of makes you think about like dang like how does my brain look like that you know? Yeah, I see what you mean. But, I mean, it's cool what you can learn about the body. And it it's it's nice to know that you can find a subject within school that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like sometimes schools need to really look into the, the student mentality and see, like, you know what, like, how can we make this more enjoyable for, for students? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you think there's something that should be done differently within school? or? Um, I think we do need better teachers at schools. Um, a lot of the times, like, there's obviously more difficult classes, and I think schools need to have those teachers that know what they're talking about or know how to teach. You know, like, they can know what they're talking about and they understand it, but sometimes they don't know how to, like, teach other people who aren't there yet. Mm, so like who would you say like newcomers then like newcomers into the into the class like they don't really know how to introduce them to it yeah makes sense because for me that was how it was for physiology and anatomy i didn't know yeah. what i was doing in that class i just got put into it but i mean other than that it was kind of difficult because like it's the transition mm -hmm. so i'm not used to that type of class yeah, I mean, I've done those science type of classes for like throughout high school. I took sports medicine, medical terminology, physiology and anatomy, and I'm taking AP bio. It's hard, but it's a lot of information. You know, you got to take it all in. And But for the most part, it's something I enjoy learning about. Okay. I mean, what's, what's the workload looking like? Um, it's mostly like packets. Well, for AP Bio, at least it's packets and packets per week. So basically you have to teach yourself in a way. I don't know if that's the way the class is just constructed, but you get these packets and you do it on your own and you take a test. So. I mean, that's how it is for most classes, but yeah, some make it enjoyable. There is no lecture at all. <laughs> That's how it is. But I mean, thank you for coming out. Thank you for joining me and talking to me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, thank you. Again, we welcome you to Young Athletic. and Thank you for having me.